While I make introductions here, let me encourage you, if you have not already signed up for your OpenStreetMap account, while I'm chit-chatting, point your browser to openstreetmap.org. And in the upper right-hand corner is a sign-up button. Please go ahead and create your account. It takes you about two minutes and uh, you'll need to verify your email address as you do that. I'm Stephen Johnson. I am an organizer for Teach OSM, a longtime member of OpenStreetMap US, and here to assist, guide, and instruct you on some mobility mapping that we'll be doing shortly. And assisting today, Hayden McLaughlin. Hayden, do you want to say a word? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Hayden. I'm a fourth year student at GW and I work on the Teach OSM project, providing support. To just a little bit about this event, a 90 minute workshop today, basic open mapping techniques. And we're going to focus on uh, street crossings and hopefully contribute a little bit to pedestrian safety with this. Our agenda today. Of course, make sure you have your OpenStreetMap accounts. We'll give you an overview of OpenStreetMap and open mapping, and we'll introduce the basics of map editing and introduce the tasking manager for actually doing the mapping in, in OpenStreet. First of all, for those of you who are unfamiliar with, with the platform, OpenStreetMap is a crowdsourced map. And it often is compared favorably with Wikipedia. So it's often called the Wikipedia for maps. And the premise is the same, is that anyone uh, with an internet connection and a laptop can sign up to be an editor of the map and engage in mapping. Anyone can be a geographer with OpenStreetMap. As a result, we have a tremendous amount of data that we've acquired over the years, curated over the years. This is an incredible publicly available source of geospatial information. So it fits well here with Open Data Week. A little bit about us. OpenStreetMap is an organization that we stood up in 2010 to support OpenStreetMap and the use of OpenStreetMap in the United States. A lot of our activities are focused on education. We conduct numerous uh, in-person as well as virtual workshops. We also have people working on uh, data availability, as well as data quality, and as well as community organized. Community is a big part of the OpenStreetMap, the OpenStreetMap organization. We do have a blog post that, that we've put out on mapping for mobility, and it describes how our activities today will can be used to increase mobility and accessibility, uh, particularly for pedestrians and, and cyclists and those with limited mobility. This is just a this is a general schema. Oops, sorry, this is a, a general schema in OpenStreetMap. You can see there's a of an aerial image here, and we've zoomed into a crosswalks here, and these are the geographic features that were mapped. Today, sidewalks and curbs are optional. However, we would the crosswalks that you see there, the crossings and the top there, that's the feature that we want to concentrate on today is nailing those crossings. Once we the crossings on the data set, we can do interesting things with it and um, we can map exactly where the crossings are and do things like check for accidents and safety, safety improvements, things like that. I'll come back to this during the, during the course of the mapping as we go on. What I would like to do, let's escape this here and let me switch over. I'd like for you to point your browsers over here to tasks.teachosm.org. I'll give you a minute to do that. Once you're on the Teach OSM Tasking Manager, go ahead and log in the upper right-hand corner. Use your OpenStreetMap credentials. Everybody with me so far? Okay. All right. In the, why don't you click on Explore Projects there. It's right in the center, top center of the screen there. And there's a search box in there. And there's a couple things you can search on Canarsi. You can search on 1389, which is the project number. You can try New York City, but you might get a couple other projects. But what we're looking for is uh, pedestrian crossings in Canarsie, New York City. It's on my screen here. Everybody with me? Okay. So I'm assuming everybody's with me here. This is the, this is the Teach OSM Tasking Manager. We use this tool to divvy up a large mapping area. So what we've done is we've taken the Canarsie neighborhood and we have put boundaries around it. And what we've done is divided up Canarsie into multiple task squares. 
And the tasking manager prevents me from mapping on top of you and you from mapping on top of your neighbor so that we don't have duplicate features and we don't have database collisions where we go to save things. This is a, an important piece of infrastructure for the OpenStreetMap community because it allows us to do events like this, distributed mapping with large numbers of people. Let's take a look at this. Let's scroll down. This page here um, describes what we're doing and why we're doing it. And we prefer to add crossing data here because sidewalks by themselves don't give us everything that we need. And also it's sidewalks expect to be linked to the other, the rest of the pedestrian network here. So if we start with street crossings, we can do interesting things with the roads that they cross as well as interrogate the um, crossing for other information. So we'll start with crossings today. You can add crosswalks if you like, and you can add curbs if you like, but I encourage you to focus on the crossings themselves on the road. So we'll just add points to the road. If you're all, if you've skimmed the instructions and, oh, one other thing, you may see up at the top of the page here, you may uh, have a little green dot by the bell there, which is probably notifying you if you're a first time user to this, it's notifying you that you need to confirm your email address before you go much further with this. All right, let's scroll down here to the bottom of the page. In the bottom right hand corner is this contribute button. Let's click on the contribute button. And here we have the task page. And on the left-hand pane here, we have the instructions. So I'll scroll down and you can see our schema, our database schema there on the left-hand side. And underneath it says, this is how we want things mapped. So this is before we were talking about the what and the why, this is the how to, we've got three elements there, street crossing, the curb, and a short footway. As I said before, we want to concentrate on street crossing. So if you do nothing else, it's perfectly acceptable to just map street crossing. Curbs, try to place it. If it's visible on the imagery, try to place it directly on the curb. I'll do some demonstrations of this when we get into the dirty work. The short footways connecting the crossings, you can add those. They might give you a nasty gram. It might give you a little yellow warning if you try to add this without connecting it to the larger sidewalk network, but we'll negotiate that. A couple things here. I like to start in the top left-hand corner and proceed to the right and, and looking for intersections that that have everything in there. There are going to be some ambiguous things here. And there's our little note here describes some of those things. If a curb ramp is to the right corner of an intersection, it's not always clear which of these options to use. So there's going to be some ambiguity. Please ask. And if you have some particularly thorny detail, we can, you can share your screen and we can noodle through it. A little. You can see down at the very bottom here, there's a change set comment in here. When you go to save, this change set comment will automatically be pre-populated. After the event, we can do some interesting things. For example, we can query on these um, hashtags and find out just how much how much data that we've added in the course of the afternoon, which makes for some pretty compelling statistics if you like to just see how much data that a handful of people can add on a lunch hour. Okay, let's let's go ahead and get started mapping. You can I, what I'd like to encourage you to do is to click on one of the white task squares from the right hand pane. So I'm going to click on one and you can see if you're looking at my screen that it's a bold black outline in the square that I've chosen. And I'm going to click map selected task. This is this is another tool. This is the ID editor in the center of the in the center of the pane here. You have two sidebars on either side. The left-hand sidebar says search for features. If you're looking at my screen, you can see that there's when I float over things, it highlights in the left-hand pane. Here's East 91st Street here. And on the right-hand pane, this is a meta task over. This is are, this controls the task that were the task square in the tasking manager. We can, there are some toggle bars and I'm hovering over this toggle bar. If you're looking at my screen right now, it says hide sidebar up here. It's right under my name. If you're having trouble finding it, it's right under your name in the tasking manager. And if you click that, it's a toggle. You can hide the sidebar. I'm toggling it back and forth. So if you're looking at my screen, you can see where the toggle is. So you can toggle that to get a little bit more real estate to um, devote to your mapping task. Okay, you see that ugly magenta square there. That corresponds to the task square that you clicked on. Um, 
And you want to stay within that task square so that you are not mapping on top, so that we're not mapping on top of one another during this event. I like to zoom way in. And as you zoom in, you can see that the buildings, the building footprints come into relief. This is beautiful imagery, by the way. All right, so let's look. I'm going to stay within my task square and I'm going to pan across. And you're welcome to watch me do this before you get your feet wet. And now here's a crossing here. I'll highlight it here on my screen so you can see what it is. Um, it's already been mapped, so there's nothing for me to do here. Let's keep panning over to the other side of the block. And there's an implied crosswalk here. There's not a marked crosswalk here. I'm going to slide back down to the other end of the block. There's no marked crosswalk here, but let's zoom in. Okay, if you're looking at my screen, I'm wondering here if this little piece here is tactile paving. Now, I'm not familiar with the neighborhood, so not sure. This looks like a hard curb here, so I don't think it's tactile paving in the, the 508 compliant. Okay, so there's an implied crossing here, if I'm correct. So I'm going to click on point, and at this right on this East 92nd Street, I've got my cursor hovering right over the center of this, and I'm going to put a pin right there, a point right there. And in my left-hand pane, you can see I've got a choice of marked crosswalk, unmarked crossing. I'm going to pick unmarked crossing here. Okay, so I've just added a crossing. So let's complete the cycle. Let's suppose I've added curbs. Let's suppose I've added crosswalks. Let's suppose I've added soft uh, a bunch of sidewalks. Let's suppose for just the sake of argument here that I've added a dozen different features here. Okay, I'm ready to save. So this, this button up here, I'm hovering over it right here. This is the save button. And you can see I've got two changes here to add. So I'm going to click on this. And in the left-hand pane, you can see I've got a pre-populated change set comment. I'm going to leave this in here and just put a cursor at the, or line my cursor at the end of it and hit a space bar. I like to add sources because I think metadata makes for a good map. So I'm going to click on sources. And for sources, I'm going to slide down and I'm going to click on aerial imagery. Okay, I'll give you a chance to complete those two steps. That is if you've added a crossing so far. Now, I'm assuming that most of you are new mappers. So I would encourage you to tick this box here on the save panel that says, I would like someone to review my edits. What that does is it's a signal to the validators that, that you want to know to give you some feedback on the quality of your mapping, essentially. Please click on that and you'll get some, hopefully you'll get some feedback on your edits and click upload. Okay, so that's off and now it's on OpenStreetMap. Okay, so that's the whole cycle from lather, rinse, repeat. Um, the next thing to do, I suppose, is suppose for the sake of argument, I've mapped my task square. I've finished everything. There's nothing left to map. So I'm going to expand this right-hand sidebar and I'm going to click no because I obviously haven't mapped everything in here. And then I'm going to submit the task and that releases the task square for the next person to map. And now I'm free to select another task square. Okay, so that's the entire process, soup to nuts. Can I pause here for any questions? Jesse in the chat has asked, would you mind going through those steps once again? Got a little lost in what was what to do after adding the point. Sure, sure. Okay, let's go through the entire process one more time. I'm on the on the instructions page here from the tasking manager, and I'm going to click this task square. Might even be the same task square. Click map selected task. This takes me into the ID editor. I can see there's nothing to do in this task here. So yeah, so let me, I'm going to mark this completely. Bear with me here while I mark this task completely mapped. There's nothing to map. So I'm going to add a note here. No mapable features, which you can add. And I'll submit the task, pick another task. Okay, so I'll pick this task. Brings me into the ID editor. And 
Okay, so I'm looking for crossings here. And that's a little outside of my tennis square. So I'm going to go down the street here a little bit. Ah, okay, so here we are back on East 91st Street. And I'm going to zoom way in. A lot of new mappers try to map from the neighborhood level, and you really have to get down to the engineering level almost to, to map adequately. Okay, to your question, let's follow along. This Let's add a feature here. Okay, so the crossing is a point. So I'm going to click on point and where did my cursor go? There we go. I'm going to try and eyeball between these two corners best I can to where this crossing goes. And you can see my cursor is hovering over the road, East 91st Street, so it's highlighted in red. And I'll click to add a point there. And so you can see in the center of my screen, you can see the point is blinking off and on there. And that's the point I have. So OpenStreetMap knows there's a piece of geometry there, but it doesn't know what it is until I go over here to the left-hand pane and I tag this as an unmarked crossing. Now, if you, if you know the neighborhood, you can add, if there's tactile paving or refuge island, there is not one here. So I can click no. And okay, I can, let's uh, add a line for the crossing. And I'm going to start on this curb through the crossing and double click on that last point. It's an unmarked crossing. And I think I can clean this up a little bit, straighten the lines, make it nice and pretty. Now I can go ahead and add curbs. Let's do that. Now the curbs are point features. So I'll click point and this, the curb is going to be coincident with the first point. And let's go up here, is it curb? Flush curb, raised curb. So I wanna put, I think I wanna put raised curb or curb? Transportation experts help me out here. Is it curb or is it raised curb? Any opinions? Well. It Depends. If there's a curb cut there, we have been mapping curb. We've been mapping that segment that you're putting in there mm -hmm. as a uh, unmarked crosswalk. And then I think we've been doing it. There's the city should have like ramps. So there should be a, a sloped. I don't know okay. how to define it by here. I know what you mean, like the, the 508 compliant ramps. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. It's not visible from the imagery. I don't know. Maybe it's there and I just can't see. See it. I'm zoomed in. Yeah, the image yeah. is really too. Some of the visual imagery now has like red squares or green squares oh. that, um, are for people who are using assistive devices to know that there's that there. So that might be in the aerial imagery in New York City aerial imagery. But at yeah, for here, Let's see here we do have. By the way, we do have the New York State orthos. They're not yours though. Mm. We don't well, have the city. The most up-to-date data comes from Cyclomedia that the city has a contract I see. with. Yeah, I would say I see that there's some comments in there from Frank Johnson. Well, would a flush curb be used as a driveway? Yeah, what would be used for a driveway? There's a there's a, there's a specific driveway tag. Yeah. Can you scroll down on this? Yeah, we start getting into wacky things here. Yeah, we were putting curb cuts. So like, I'm surprised that there isn't a curb cut or that there is a... Yeah, it might just be how it's defined. We can click on these little eye things here that will give us some... Here's the flush curb here. I think it would be a flushed curb versus a rolled curb, unless it's specifically a rolled curb or what's the lower curb definition. Let's see. That to me looks the same as, yeah. as a rolled. I think a rose curb has this bull nose... No, a lower curbed or the lower curbed. curbed. Okay. Those two look almost, it looks like they're using the exact same. The, the exact same image. Yeah. Should we just put curb in here for now? Oh. Or I'm deferring to you as the experts because I'm not a New Yorker. So yeah, I would put a flush curb. If you're going to, it'd be better if we can actually see the curb. Yeah. I would put a flush curb for now. Here's something we can do here is we can tag it as a flush curb and we can add a field here. Why can't I add a field here? Let's see. Flush curb, flurb, unknown. Can I add a note? Yes. I can add a note that says field verify, if that would help. And that will give a signal to that we need to you know, verify that in terms of data quality. Is that a, a tag that you that is routinely known in the OSM community to then verify that? Yes. Okay. There might be a, let's see what we can do here. Oops. 
see if there's other appropriate tags that we can use here. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Verify. So I can add a tag that says verify equals yes. So that's an, that's a, that's an accepted. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to finish up. I'm going to add the other side of the street. I'm going to add another one here. This is a flush curb. I'll add a verify and let's put yes. All right. I've here, I've added uh, a crossing. I've added the crosswalk itself, the unmarked crosswalk itself, and flush curbs on either side. So this is the whole, kind of the whole shebang for one corner. So let's go ahead. I'm going to save what I have right here just to show you the save procedure again. Remember to keep all of the stuff here in the change set comment, because that's all valuable stuff. To add a field for sources, and we'll add aerial imagery as our source. Tick the box that says, I would like someone to review my edits, and then click upload. Okay, now let me see how I'm doing on the rest of my task square here. All right, the rest of this, the rest of my square looks pretty good. I'm going to give it one more scan just to make sure. I see this crosswalk right outside of my task square, but I'm going to leave it to one of you to pick that one up. I don't want to risk, I don't want to risk mapping on top of one of you. Okay, this square looks pretty good. So I'm going to call, I'm going to declare victory here. And I will expand the right-hand sidebar. And I'm going to mark this task completely mapped. And I'm going to add a note here, verify curb types, ver verify curb types here. And I'll submit that task. So that's a little heads up to the next person who looks at this that, hey, there's something here that you ought to be aware of. All right, I'm going to pick another task square on my tour of Canarsie here. And let's shrink the sidebar. Ah, okay, we've got a couple unmarked walks. Ah, this one's marked. Good. They may have to deal with trees like I've got on my screen right here, but you'll have to kind of eyeball things as you go. Okay, so I'm going to start with crossing here. So that's a point feature, and this one, I have those nice parallel lines in there, so I'm just going to put this right smack in the middle of that. And this is a marked crossing. There is no refuge island, so I'm going to tick that. And let's see, let's add a line, and we'll go from curb to curb. Remember to double-click on that last point to finish the line. And this is a marked crossing. In the, in the left-hand pane, you can type, like the first few words of something, and it will it will bring up the choice of tags here. And this is a marked crosswalk. Is there a refuge island? No. So I'm going to tick that. And if you right click somewhere along the length of the line, you can slide down to straighten and make it nice and pretty. Okay. So let's add our curbs. I'm going to click point, and we'll mark this a flush curb. I'm going to add the verify tag again because it doesn't hurt. And let's go click point again, and we'll add a crossing or add a curb to the other side of the street. And I'll add the verify tag there as well. All right, I've got one intersection. Now, you, you need not save after every intersection. So I'm going to do you know several here in a row. I think once your save button starts to accumulate more than, say, a dozen features, a dozen changes, you should probably save. Especially in a group event like this, you don't want to, A, you don't want to lose your work, and, and um, B, you, if for any reason you were to, like your computer would crash or something like that, you don't want to lose all the work that you've done. So I like to save regularly with that. Okay, so here I am at this next intersection, and we'll start with the crossing. And oops, let's see. Make that an unmarked crossing with an unknown, with a no refuge island. Now we'll add the crossing itself, starting with the curb, clicking on the road, clicking exactly on the other curve two times. And this is a marked crosswalk. And I will right click on the line, straighten it, make it nice and purdy. Now let's add the curbs, flush curb, curb. All right, so I've got two intersections matched. You'll notice if the uh, save button starts to turn pale yellow and then it turns canary yellow and then if it turns orange or red, you're in trouble. So don't let it do that on you. Now, here's a dilemma here on my screen, what to do with this. Like I've got this crosswalk that starts in my square and goes into the next square. Um, 
I'm the kind of mapper who likes to get things. I like to map things on the boundary or right over the boundary. But in a setting like this, where we've got multiple mappers in a very dense neighborhood, it's problematic. So I'm not going to add this particular intersection right now. Instead, I'm going to go back over to the other side of the quadrant here. Okay, it looks like we got some action here. Let's see. Oh, super. Somebody's already added stop sign here, which is nice. Right at the stop line, too. So I'm going to add another crossing here, unmarked crossing. And let's add the line for the cross crosswalk itself. Marked crosswalk. Straighten the lines. And now I'll add the curbs. I don't know if it's an artifact of the imagery, but when I zoom in on this particular curb, it does indeed look like there's a lowered, a flush curb right here. And I can't tell if it's tactile paving. I forget what those little bumps are called. There's the transportation planners would know what those are called. But it does look from the shadows in the imagery, there's a lowered crossing right here. So if you can use the shadows to your benefit, as well as your professional expertise and local knowledge, that will be helpful. And you won't need to put the verify tags on there. If you, one of the advantages about OpenStreetMap is it's local knowledge trumps everything. And so if you do have undisputed local knowledge, it gives you a um, special mapping license. All right. If you take a look at my little save button here, you can see it's starting to turn yellow because I've got 14 items here that I haven't saved. So I'm going to go ahead and save, retaining the stuff in the change set comment, add my sources as aerial imagery. Now I'm not going to tick the box because I've spent a lot of time ticking that box and I think my edits are okay, but I still encourage you to fill them in. And you can save and then, you know, continue on with your task square. Yep, I'm just going to move down the street here. In these areas with shadows and trees and stuff, you'll have to do your best to eyeball it in there. You can move it later on. So that's the cool thing about OpenStreetMap. You can move it. Okay, this is a marked crosswalk. And I'm tagging these as with no refuge island in them. Add the curbs. I'm going to gamble here and I'm not going to add the verify tag because I think that the intersections here are flush, just based on the imagery and the shadows and that. Yeah, there's several intersections in my task score. That's good. I like to see that somebody's added stop signs in there. That's a nice feature. Stephen, I think you're also at a very special spot because there's some truffle paint there, which creates a kind of a pedestrian island in paint only. Oh, really? Yeah. If you do a little, when you're done making the edit, I would love to just inspect that little Yeah, let's do. So yeah, I would too. That'd be cool. Okay, so let me uh, add my crossing here. And okay, that part's done. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so is this what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you pull to the left yeah. or down, yeah, if you pull, if you zoom out just a little bit more, I can help give context. So there's been some traffic calming that they've done there at Pendergast's tent. So that you see how the cars are mm -hmm. perpendicular right. to the curb. You can see that there is a crosswalk in the bike lane slash curb, which yes. is to the left and toward the trees. And then there is a big truffle paint. That's what we call it. That tannish paint is, is a kind of a pedestrian refuge island. And they've moved the stop sign, as you can see, away from the curb and further out into the street. Out into the street. Um, so that whole tan area is technically it's a painted pedestrian island. And then the bike lane that's there is also signaled as a mixed use bike and pedestrian walkway. As oh, you can I see the little yeah. human person. Let's do some noodling around here. Let's click on this. This is okay. This is tagged as a cycle path. Now I'm not an expert on bike mapping, but, or mixed use transportation, things like this. But I'm wondering if the experts would know whether to tag this as both pedestrian and and cycles. So like I, I would just go ahead. I sorry. Keep it a cycle path. I don't know if there's another tag that could be added yes. to the cycle path as like here's one here on my screen, cycle and footpath. Mm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you you are the experts here, so I'm going to let you debate how you want to tag that. But I just want to make it known that there are different ways to tag this thing, depending on what you want to, like multi-use is what I was thinking of. That's where I started, multi-use. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, let's see what the little, okay, that's 
not too helpful there for the image, but it does it does say that there's an option that you might want to consider. I'm not go- I'm going to leave it alone for now. Okay. Let's. What I'm interested in is if I can. I'm just going to digitize a little bit of this here. And let's see if there's, I'm not familiar with traffic island, traffic calming. We do have this traffic calming. So we could label that as island, table, hump, bump, choker, chicane. I don't even know what that is. So here, painted island. This is a painted island. Yeah. It's interesting that this is still the the focal point is on vehicle access Mm -hmm. versus on, on pedestrian. Like this is still the traffic calming is almost intended for to understand it from a point of view, like a dashboard point of view instead of a pedestrian point of view. Is a tagging scheme or? Yeah, there is an a pedestrian island, pedestrian island, and that is called Painted Island. Huh, let's see. Pedestrian area, but I'm not sure that. Let's see what they have. Yeah, that's like uh, roads mainly reserved for pedestrians. That doesn't fit the bill here. I, I see okay. what you're saying here. And I think that's a valid point is that the point of view here is auto-centric and that from a mapping standpoint, it would be good to tag these as pedestrian features rather than, do do I understand you correctly? Yep. Yep. Exactly. You're going down your, yeah. Frank is giving you some shout outs. Thank you very much as we're ending the, but yes, I, 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 I wish that the language was flexible and wasn't so auto-centric. It can be made pedestrian-centric. And the there there is an avenue. And the good thing about OpenStreetMap is you can get involved with the project and say, hey, and there's an active community. In fact, let me in the chat here, let me go to actually Hayden, can I ask you to go to the Slack in the general channel? There's a link. It's a Heroku link for joining the OpenStreetMap US Slack. And so what I would like to suggest is that you um, join the Slack, join our OpenStreetMap community. And there's an active, there's a huge group that spends time on transportation, pedestrian, cycling, trails, those issues. And so what I uh, would suggest is like saying, hey, how about retagging these and having a tagging proposal? I, I'm not acquainted with all of the issues with it, but so certainly your the OpenStreetMap community stands on the shoulders of giants like you who are professionals and you have domain expertise in these fields. So um, I would encourage you to bring your expertise into this. We're always looking for people to make this the best map possible, but this would be a nice, it would would be, and it would be useful. And I think it would be widely adopted to make these sorts of changes. So I encourage you to get involved with that. I'm going to make this, if this is not, so we do have this traffic calming painted island. But yeah, I see your point about this being a pedestrian refuge rather than a traffic calming feature. And I think that's a good point with that. So the interesting thing I think is I can probably tag these, this paving here at the corner, these red, and this is what you're saying there. These are red. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. That's a tactile covering that is used to indicate with someone who has right. an assistive walking device that they're coming up to on an intersection. Okay, right. Yeah, I think most cities have those now, don't they? We do here in Washington area. There's a, the city had to go through a massive lawsuit and, and actually there's a, a website that's dedicated to every single intersection and whether or not it is, has that tactile covering. Sadly, the intellectual property of that website cannot be used to bring that data into OSM. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it's licensed proprietary data. I was exploring with the Bing street side view to check out some of the curbs. And that imagery is from 2014 and they don't have the the tactile paving on any of them. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, 2014, that's starting to get a little long on the tooth in terms of currency, data currency. All right, I'm gonna take a risk that no one is mapping to myself. And I'm going to, can I do this? (laughs) I can't really see the, it's gonna add the crosswalk for this one here, but I can't quite see the other side of the street. Let me switch images. Yeah, that's not much better. No good. One of the reasons why there may be a, that area is a mixed use zone, uh-huh. pedestrian and cyclists, 
is that there may not be a proper sidewalk on that side of the street. Oh, I um, see. And so what they've done is essentially pulled and created the sidewalk a- along the physical curb into whatever park or area right. and then move the cars into what was once the street bed. Yeah. Um, so I'm for across the, for the curbs here, I'm clicking the little box for tactile paving equals yes on this one. And I could put flush curb there, but I can't really see the can't really see if there's tactile paving on that curb from at least from this image here. So I'm going to leave it off. I could add a note that says, hey, verify this. And here, did I tick? Yes. Let's tick tactile paving for that. Okay, I'm ready to save this square. So I'm guess, guessing everyone is heads down mapping, right? Because there's not too much chatter in the or it's all in the it's all in the chat window, isn't it? Okay, this task score looks pretty good. So I'm going to expand this sidebar, check that it's completely mapped. I'm going to add another note, verify tactile paving at curbs and submit the task. Okay. Is everybody doing okay? Can I help with anything? I'm just sharing my screen and mapping along, but if anybody has a peculiar, particular problem, a thorny, ambiguous thing that they're looking at that they don't know what it is. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. I started typing as a Slack, but it was getting so long. But, but so I'm looking at my map area, and there is there is a residential road that has gates marks at either end, and I'm just mm. curious if we would consider that to be something that has like an implied crossing or not, just given that it doesn't seem to be like a public vehicle way. It's you can map it as a barrier. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, um, Right, the the gate, the gates, the barriers are already um, mapped as points on the map. I'm more just thinking about from the pedestrian point of view: is that considered to be a crossing or not? I would defer to local expertise here. If that, if the gates prevent pedestrian and vehicular access, then I would, you know, map them as barriers and not put, not add a crosswalk in there. If pedestrians can continue through the gates. Okay. It's I not, them, I, yeah, it's not really clear from the aerial imagery because it looks like it might be more of a private way. It just, it's like unpaved and so it's hard to say. Would you like to share your screen? Oh yeah, sure. This is what I'm looking at. And these are the gates that are already marked. But my question is, would you, this is like, essentially a driveway as far as I can tell, but it's still labeled as a road. Can you click on the road? Yes. Residential road. Oh, interesting. It's not a, is it a driveway or is it a public street? That's what I'm not really so sure about. <laughs> is it just uh, on zooming out? Yeah. Yeah. I can, you, on the left-hand pane where the um, attribute data is, can you scroll down? Yeah. Can you scroll down to the bottom? Ah, I see. Okay. So this is from the Tiger import. So that's why it's classified as a residential road. So this piece of information has probably been untouched since 2008. The question is, it looks like there's gates at both ends. So I would add something. First of all, we don't know if it's a public street, a private street, an alley, or a driveway. So there's probably... So a note that you should add here that says what kind of what kind of street is this street public or private? In any event, I don't think there's a street crossing there. Okay. That- but yeah, and when you when you close out this task in that right hand pane, you should add a comment in there as well. Okay. And do that. Okay. okay. Um sounds good. Thank you. I'll start. Alrighty. And I'll share back. All right. Any other questions while we're paused? Blurt them out if you've got them. Yeah, I've got a question. Sure. What's the difference between a lowered and a flush curb? I will defer to the transportation experts here on this call. Bear in mind, though, that a lot of our tags, OpenStreetMap is an international project. So a lot of our tags come from Europe and the UK. And for example, the you can type C-U-R-B and it will come up. But you can also type K-E-R-B, and that works just as well in Great Britain. So my guess is that there, and I'll let the transportation experts here on this answer this, that there's some 
difference between the two? I don't, I guess the short answer is I don't know what the difference is. If I have a follow-up on that, if it's a flush curb, is the assumption that it's wheelchair accessible? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. And if that's the key distinction, then I would say yes, flush. Because lowered could mean, lowered is a little bit more ambiguous, but flush is, it's right at grade level. I would agree. All right. So I'm going to pick this last task up here in the corner here. Oh, good. Lots to do here. And when you're mapping a sidewalk, you haven't done too much sidewalk mapping. How does one categorize that driveway as you have your mouse over it? Is this curb lower, like to the grade, uh, uh, flush curb? Can I ask you to share? No, I'm pointing at your screen right here. I'm, oh. I'm not on, on that, but like here you have a pretty funky intersection. Right, right. No, uh, you have three crosswalks, you know, what mm-hmm. looks like two, two driveways. Oh, these, oops. If you do that, just hit Command Z and go back. These driveways right here, I am, yeah, I won't even map those. I won't even touch okay. those. And here's why. This, these driveways are here to create a logical connection between the parking lot and East 108th Street. I don't, re- I'm not really concerned with whether they're flush or not. Now, when I get over here to this crosswalk, so if I, Here's the tactile paving. I can see that little gray square there. So that's my lowered curb Mm -hmm. right there. So I won't really touch the driveways. The driveways are in a parallel universe. They're they're incidental to what? Put it on the map. This is a line or something. Let's try this again. They're incidental to the map here. So this is just a a driveway here to, yeah, service road, just to connect it to this parking lot. Let me zoom out a little bit here. So it just goes around here. So this forms a, it's a logical connection here. It's not really, well, I guess it is a physical connection, but there has to be a way for the routing engine to, to see through it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Let me expand my screen here. Are there teach, were there teach OSM meetups in the past where the teach OSMers got together? There are, yeah. Short answer. Yes. We, we're a, a project of the OpenStreetMap US community and like the educational working group, educational arm of OpenStreetMap US. A lot of our focus is on high school, community college, university level, using OpenStreetMap to teach geography as well as social and environmental sciences and humanities to some extent. We have project meetings. We have two, two meetings a month. So one is a steering committee meeting and the other one is open to the public. If you are interested in joining, um, in joining, I, and, and this for anyone on the call who's interested in open mapping and education, I uh, welcome you to join us. If you're interested, let me know. We have been a small group, and so we do tag up at um, the State of the Map Conference, which is our annual open street mapping event. And we have a lot of, I, I do a lot of facilitating of workshops like this. And in fact, I, I host uh, host one and every, the first and third Tuesday nights, we have our map alongs. If you're interested in joining, I know this is, we've baptism by fire here with open mapping, but if you're interested in furthering your skills and deepening your knowledge of OpenStreetMap, as well as its applications for your professional environment, I welcome you to join us on the first and third Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time, first and third Tuesdays. We map for an hour. I typically try to have a theme or have a geographic scope that we're focusing on. Like, for example, we've done some mapping in St. Lucia, or we'll do pedestrian safety mapping, or we have guest mappers who introduce tools in the OpenStreetMap ecosystem as well. So if that appeals to you, or if you want to do more with OpenStreetMap, I welcome you to join us on Tuesday nights as well. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm just happy to be able to do this. This is this is, this is a really cool project, and I like I like these kinds of uh, it's good mapping. I just want to say thank you very much. Thanks for joining us from the nation's capital and the nation's capital suburb, or formerly the nation's capital if you're in Arlington. I am in DC. Was once, yeah. Was once part of DC until, yeah, it's a shame. Could have had a really cool city there. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Stephen and Hayden. I really appreciate you two zooming in uh, to us today. Thank you. Thank you. And hope to see you live down the road sometime in the future. Thanks so much. Cool. Thank you. Bye-bye.